Africa is a blessed continent that has almost everything that man needs for survival. Its landscape, natural resources and friendliness among its people are incomparable to no other continent on earth. However, rapid population growth associated with poverty has exploited most of the valuable natural resources. This in turn has resulted in ecological disturbances and loss of economy for a number of countries. Malawi too is an example of countries that are rapidly losing their natural resources, so much that most of the land is degraded and its water bodies affected by siltation. The Shira River is one very important water body that has for long been a source of economy to the country as it has provided 97% of the country's electricity supply, irrigation activities and drinking water to Blantyre City. But of late, human activities happening within the river's catchment areas have brought misery to development within the river course. The river used to have the once mighty elephant marsh, a home to numerous wildlife, both marine and terrestrial, but encroachment has limited the existence of all these. In order to save the Shire from more problems, government of Malawi has set up a program known as the Shire River Basin Management Program with funding from the World Bank, International Development Association, Least Development Countries Fund and the Global Environmental Facility. The program has a number of projects, one of them being the rehabilitation of the Elephant Marsh in Chikwawa and Imsaje districts. As the name implies, the marsh is said to have been a home of more than 800 elephants in the 1800s, at the time when Dr. David Livingstone passed the area during his navigation, but none exists there at the present day. In order to come up with good and recommended ways of rehabilitating the area, a number of activities such as research and some studies need to be undertaken so that the area is developed for the benefit of both the local inhabitants and the whole nation as well. Study tours to some countries that have similar wetlands have been encouraged and undertaken in countries like India, Ethiopia and most recently in the Okavango Delta in Botswana. This is the flight to the Ngamiland district in the north of Botswana where the 100th World Heritage Site is situated. The Malawi team is taken to the Okavango Hotel in Maun Town for a day's briefing by all sectors involved in the development and conservation of the Okavango Basin. These sectors include the tourism, environmental affairs, wildlife, water resources, agriculture, research institution and others that collaboratively work with one goal of developing the basin. It is believed that studies from the Okavango Delta are vital to the development of the Elephant Marsh because of their similarities. Tourism is one very important area that the Shira River Basin Management Program would like to develop in the marsh. But how much is tourism developed in the Okavango Delta that is worth emulating? Began Setume is Tourism Development Manager based in Maun. Botswana and explains the pride that the Botswana people have over the Okavango. The Okavango Delta is the jewel you know, of Botswana. Uh, this is the one product uh, that we are proud of as a country. Uh, indeed a gift that we've been given by the Almighty. Uh, it is um, a source of livelihood for our communities and of course a, a source of um, a business a, a livelihood again for a, our private sector and the other relevant stakeholders including the government. It is pleased to know that tourism in Botswana accounts for 5 to 7 percent contribution in the GDP second to diamond mining. As a priority area of development Tourism is heavily invested and there is much that Okavango Basin offers to the tourists due to abundance of natural resources. We are really prioritizing uh, uh, tourism because we believe that uh, uh, with uh, the decline uh, of process from mining, we believe that uh, tourism 
as part of it will be the second uh, income generating industry. So uh, we have really prioritized uh, in terms of uh, developing tourism. Uh, I think one obvious thing is uh, the uh, commissioning of a Botswana tourism organization as an, a, a, an agency that is meant to really drive a tourism a, to its highest level a, if Botswana is to eventually realize optimum a, benefits from it as an industry. The country has policies that ensure that activities in Tokavango do not affect the environment and the local people are encouraged to venture into the tourism business. Before we can even allow you uh, to operate any kind of tourism in the Delta, uh, we go through a uh, thorough processes uh, that involved uh, land use planning where we actually identify uh, suitable activities for uh, specific areas. Um, this is a, a process that involves uh, all the relevant stakeholders from water management, uh, natural resource management, wildlife, uh, tourism experts, uh, land use people. Uh, all the stakeholders are involved to ensure that at the end of the day uh, we have a plan that is actually uh, sustainable in terms of uh, in terms of use. So um, we also have a uh, different uh, legal uh, instruments that we actually use uh, to support uh, uh, implementations of this uh, plan so that uh, they should not in any way uh, negatively harm uh, our environment. She advises the developers of the Elephant Marsh to put environment first if the area is to be developed in line with the tourism industry. I think it should always be a environment first, environment first before a uh, trade or the industry. If you go that route, you will not go wrong. Because first of all, you will protect, uh, and when you protect, the more you protect, uh, the more economic benefits you can derive from that system. Uh, if we are just going to go industry, industrialization, industrialization, and not balance with protection, you may find that at the end of the day, you don't even have a product that you can do a, a, a business in. Plans contained in the Shira River Basin Management Program also have some elements of improving the faces of some of the national parks and game reserves that lay within the river basin as centers of tourist attraction. The Elephant Marsh is earmarked for such improvements and a possible reckoning of wildlife will be considered. However, managing human and animal conflicts has for a long time been a challenge in areas where national parks are encroached by communities. How does the Department of Wildlife in Botswana deal with such challenges that Malawi can learn during this study tour? Shaft Nengu is Principal Wildlife Officer too, and tells us how wildlife is managed and also ways of how they handle human wildlife conflicts in Okavango. For the Department to manage wildlife, we do have some legislation. We do have the Wildlife Act and the, the subsidiary legislation. So there are, we've got certain functions that we do undertake. This includes problem, problem animal controls, managing the national parks like Muremi Game Reserve and wildlife management areas, and also managing areas that are outside protected areas. And we are also managing the fisheries resources and others. In order to try and address the conflict, we have come up with some management strategies. This includes the following. We have got uh, some medica medication, we have got a project that is funded through the World Bank that uh, has come up with some mitigation measures. These include uh, using chili pepper to control the elephants, using some bees also to control the elephants. We have got also, some also use dogs, you know, dogs in order to control some predators that kill livestock. Nengu also recognizes the important role that communities through the community-based natural resources management committees display in assisting Botswana government in management of wildlife 
and advises Malawi to follow some of the principles. Through the community-based natural resource management project, which is commonly known as CBRM, the communities have realized the value that can be derived from wildlife for their own benefit. So in that respect now, they are assisting us a lot in, man in managing the, the wildlife themselves. Definitely the, 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 the department is, is benefiting a lot because if, they were, if the communities were not managing, it, it could be us going out there to, ma to manage. But with the mega resources we are having, the communities are assisting us in terms of man managing. As already alluded to, research work in projects like the Elephant March development is so vital to the promotion of social economic growth. Like in the Okavango Basin, government of Botswana deliberately set up the Okavango Research Institute to oversee activities of developing the Delta. The most pleasing part of the research is the vigorous consultations with communities and that the institute put forward and claims to have worked wonders in the Delta development. The Malawi delegates visit the Ori and is welcomed by Associate Professor Wellington Masamba, a fellow Malawian, who is acting director of the institute and explains more on the successes of their research work. Um, all the groundwork was done. You know, Botswana strongly believes in consultation. All the consultations were done. Green light given. When the bulldozers began moving in, people said, no way, this isn't what we are looking for. We think this, the magnitude of this project will damage the delta. We, we, we don't think this is, this is definitely is not what we, are, what we thought we are approving. Uh, and then, of course, you know, even international you know, institutions came in and there was an uproar about the whole project. And government said, okay, let's hold it, let's get another opinion. So the protein are UCN, can you evaluate this intended project? And the UCN said, look, you know, the advantages were overplayed, the disadvantages underplayed, it's not worth it. And even those contracts had been signed and everything was on the go government decided to pull out of that project. And that then, you know, indicated the need for information, you know, the need to, you know, for government to be able to make decisions about the government hotel based on data, based on something as opposed to maybe intuition. Now when that need was, you know, uh, was um, identified, it's the investor persona that said, okay, we're going to have a branch of the university that can carry out research in the Delta. Like in many African community set up, traditional leaders are regarded as development initiators and their influence is always adhered to by all. The group saw it important to pay a courtesy call to the paramount chief of Ngamiland district and learn more of their role and involvement in then coming up with Okavango development plans. She says her major responsibility is to always see an improved welfare of her people in Okavango. Normally, um, within the, uh, the, the, the tribal administration, our main duty is to um, adjudicate two trials. And again, um, we have a quota where we gather to talk about the uh, development of uh, this area. And um, the Kutla, nobody is restricted to see whatever you are ready for you, to see whatever you want, whether you are close or you are the, the, the ideas. We are responsible for the welfare of the people. Um, most people here 
the farming and um, fishing and they collect reeds and grass as a way of living. We are a tourist area. We have the Alcobango Delta and the Marine Bay Reserve, which is popularly known as a tourist attraction. And we have a few mines which are coming up. There's a red one in the open area near the lake. The Paramount chief is so influential, so much, so that some by laws that are made here are taken on board by government. Some of the communities that benefit from the natural resources are the Sharobe basket weavers, whose merchandise is usually bought by tourists. As Malawi tries to put some structures in the elephant marsh, it is important to empower communities with all necessary tools and ideas on how they can develop the area for their own benefit. In Okavango Delta, for example, the communities have concessions which allow them to own tourism structures within the delta. The Sankoyo Sarahano Management Trust is a typical example. Haku Galesengwe is chairperson of the trust and explains how they operate. The area has been demarcated into two, uh, two sections, being the photographic zone and then the hunting zone. So in the hunting zone we worked with uh, Yuan Kalis, while he would sub this to the photographic zone to a, a photographic safari. And most of the funds would, uh, yeah, the, the, most of our revenues would be through uh, land rental and quota fees. And then uh, most of the benefits would be through employment and corporate social responsibility. So, yeah, that's basically how we've been operating. I would say, um, the reason why I'm saying how is because uh, now we are converting from uh, consumptive tourism to non-consumptive tourism. So we are through a, a transition period uh, which probably in the near future will be dealing with uh, non-consumptive tourism purely. However, Glesengwe says the road to their success has not been rosy because of the resistance of the community had in the first place. We, when the government came uh, to say we want to start this project, community-based natural resources management, it was not easy. I think it took uh, years for, 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 for the community to agree to it. At first, it was the Department of Wildlife and National Parks. So there was that belief that if you see soldiers, then they want to shoot someone. So when you see the Department of Wildlife and National Parks, they want to apprehend someone. So, looking at the fact that we are not that used to the, the, the government, government institutions and mostly government of wildlife national parks, uh, people were, were thinking that, uh, but then maybe the government is, is coming to take over. But actually what, what the government was saying is, we want, to, we want you to, to be responsible with these natural resources and we want you to benefit from the natural resources. But like I was saying, it took some years before they would, they would agree to it because they thought the government was trying to... Yeah. So as time went on, then they realized the benefits. But, ah, but these guys, they were talking of employment. Now there is a company coming in. This company is going to employ uh, 30 people. It was at first, it was 15, 15, two hunting camps and the photographic. So it was each, in each and every hunting camp. It was 15-15, uh, which is 30, plus 26 in the photographic camp. So if you add the numbers, then uh, looking at the fact that there was no employment within the, the, the community, then people started realizing that, yeah, but at least there's something here. Because at the end of the month, then 
they'll get something from the, the, their, 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 their children who are, who are employed into in the concession. So now they started to realize the benefits. And then uh, as time went on, there was that improvement to say, to look into the elders in the village. So when they, uh, they com the company goes out and the area has to be returned to him, or to be returned, then we realize that ah, but we are living, we've been living out the elders and they are the ones who, who no, obviously they are, they are main activity to be plowed. So then they said, okay, fine, if a private com company comes in, then you should take over the initiative of plowing for, for the elders. Leader of the Malawi group believes the community is a good example from which Malawi can buy a leaf. I think uh, there's so much transformation, right? so much growth that we can appreciate. And the, we have actually even seen some newest developments. The, 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 the tent that we saw are marvelous. I think uh, they can also be considered as upmarket. I think for the village, uh, this is a, an amazing development uh, that we would like to emulate. Actually, we'll be going to the Delta, but I think uh, the climax of our visit is in this village. Well, that's what we want to emulate for the Elephant Marsh. Mm -hmm. I want to establish it uh, not as a, a government thing, mm -hmm. but as a community thing, yeah. right? That which can be run by uh, the community in all aspects. But will, the government will only help them to develop, right? because I think there, there is still always an outside intervention right? that can enable the community to develop. Coordination of activities in the Okavango is done through a committee of the stakeholders involved led by the Department of Environmental Affairs, DEA. But what is the main involvement of the DEA in the Okavango Basin Management? Belda Masapele is District Environmental Coordinator for Ngamiland and Chobe Districts and she has more light on how integrated approach has helped to manage the basin. The involvement of uh, the Department of Environmental Affairs in the Okavango Basin is an integrated approach that relates to conservation and environmental issues. We do, as Department of Environmental Affairs, uh, enforce uh, the Environmental Assessment Act, number 10 of 2011, and through that act, there are provisions that relate to environmental impact assessment. DEA enforces policies that ensure that no activities or systems do pollute the Okavango Delta. Our department is here to enforce the Environmental Act, the Environmental Act, they have uh, thresholds in there that we enforce them and uh, our communities do comply with those. That relates to, in particular, your questions, that relates to farming. Now, those, uh, uh, the Act on itself guides us to coordinate issues related to farming and pollution. There are indeed uh, communities that uh, do what's called the Molapo farming, a traditional way of farming in which they relate, they, those type of farming are related to the receding and flooding of the water in some lower uh, parts of, uh, of uh, the delta. However, we also enforce the act in which regulates some of the issues related to farming, like a non-application of pesticides, uh, ensure that uh, some of the farming is done in a 200 meter line just like it was identified during the uh, development of the Okavango Delta Management. The Department of Environmental Affairs appreciates the various systems that communities in the Okavango have set up which in many ways assist the department to smoothly run its programs. She also calls on Malawi to think of integrated communities in the Elephant Marsh as they are a vital component of management. I can say yes, uh, the communities adhere to the compliance of the Act when it comes to compliance of issues related to the environment. 
the, for instance, the issues that were identified by the community themselves, like the enforcement of the fisheries regulations, where there is a, a time period where the, the fish rejuvenate themselves. So those kinds of things, they are initiatives that came indeed from the community. There are issues related to the uh, the distance from which they, they farm from the river. Those are the things that came from the consultations with the community. So those are aspects that can really come with the community. I also want to allude to the fact that the community itself is concerned about maintaining the delta as a pristine. And they, they come with initiatives of uh, applying for organizing themselves as trusts, applying themselves for funding. In this case, there is a National Environment Fund in which they draw funding to make sure that uh, they stop op open defecation, they develop uh, systems of sanitation that they, they reduce or uh, pollution of the environment. What I want to add is that uh, Malawi can learn from Botswana is that they, they should integrate the community. They should integrate uh, different approaches of management to address, uh, to make a, a system a functional and manageable. The community is a vital uh, component of management. It is now time for the team to fly over to Okavango Delta to appreciate what nature has in store for the people of Botswana. Having toured a number of hotspots and institutions, what is it that the Malawi group has learned during the tour? The focus for this study tour was really to understand wetland management. And that's why it uh, gave us uh, some insights to come to uh, Okavango uh, River Basin. Uh, the uh, the uh, reasons are that we will be uh, almost getting similar approaches that we have taken from Okavango for the management uh, of the uh, uh, elephant marsh wetland in Malawi. So the lessons that we have drawn from here is that uh, it's not simple, right? We really need to go with what we have planned to study. We really need to go with what we have planned that uh, so many uh, consultants must be uh, brought uh, to give us information. Uh, there's uh, no real uh, studies in the, in, the, in the elephant march as to date. And uh, we are far behind for us to say that uh, this would be a, uh, a Ramza site we really need information that can help us uh, to put up together a nomination file. Nirenda says he's delighted to know that organization is the most important thing that has helped the Okavango to grow beyond expectations and is optimistic that with government support, Malawi should be able to realize the dreams of transforming the elephant marsh into another paradise. From uh, the government institutions, uh, Yes, uh, we can uh, say that the uh, organization is an important aspect uh, in terms of uh, where we are, like uh, 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 the guys in Botswana, where they started and the, where they would have liked to go. That's where they are still in, or like, on a road map. They haven't reached there. Right? Uh, in terms of communities, they also like, uh, they have... Uh, had so many challenges. Challenges, uh, I think, faced uh, because they did not uh, really trust uh, government institutions, organizing them into an establishment that can utilize natural resources. But uh, by and by, uh, they adopted uh, the feelings and aspirations of government, and uh, they have been organized into a well-established Sibenarium uh, 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 institution which they call themselves as the Sankuyo uh, uh, Trust. Uh, in that one, they have uh, uh, both the hunting aspects and also the ecotourism aspects. We are treated to uh, the campsite, right, in which we, uh, we found two distinct establishments. The other one is almost upmarket, we would say, but run by the communities. The other one is uh, like a campsite. But we are also informed that to do that, 
government had supported them a lot. And that's what we would expect when we uh, are looking at the elephant march, uh, because uh, in any case, those communities cannot get organized without the government support. So government will have to put in a lot of money. Uh, it is uh, good that this project would like to start the ball rolling, but I think uh, the resources that the project have is not enough to bring the elephant march to the status that we have seen in Okavango. It is important that we need to buy a leaf. However, there's you know, minor differences. You remember we had also visited the Paramount Chief in the Mauni, right? Uh, the, our interaction with the Chief really appreciated the fact that uh, they were fully uh, concerted as communities in the management of the Okavango. And uh, uh, there are some uh, communities that actually were moved out from the data, but they accepted to be moved out because they were fully informed, they were fully on that, and they, become, they became fully aware of the benefits that they would uh, be getting from the Okavango data, even by moving. And today, there are, you know, there are establishments that are actually run by communities. The Okavango River originates from the hilly areas of Angola and passes through Namibia, then finally into Botswana. To ensure that peace and stability are strengthened within the three countries, in regards to management of the basin, an institution called Okakom was formed with its secretariat in Mauni. It is yet to be seen if the Shira River Basin will accommodate similar arrangements since part of the basin extends to the neighboring Mozambique. It is Malawi's hope that with time and proper management, the Elephant Marsh will be transformed to the levels of Okavango and become the nation's breadwinner, and that the 15-year period of the Shira River Basin Management Program will not be a wastage of time and resources. Sebona kai, Ajat Pitima Kanya, Ile, Sebona Kai, Sana Lipitiana, Samara Kota, 